What do we say we take this blue guy on a little field trip? I'm sure there's a mall around here somewhere. What's a mall? One of the fun things we've done in these movies now is we've made them period films. X-Men First Class was obviously a movie about the 60s and took place there, and in Days of Future Past, the past part of it was the 70s, and, and this is now full-on 80s. We have gone full-on 80s in look, in feel, in vibe, in music, everything about it. It's mainly roadway, 300 feet long. I hired as a production designer Grant Major, who did the Lord of the Rings films, and he was very meticulous about everything. And we built some pretty exquisite sets, some of the biggest I've ever built. I've never done an X-Man film before, and of course this is part of a really successful franchise, so there was a lot to take on board in terms of what had been established so far, because we were reproducing some of the worlds that had been established previously. It smells pretty old in here. Is this a school or a museum? The X-Mansion in the X-Men films is iconic, really. It's, it's really the center of the whole sort of X-Men world. That I was given the opportunity to be able to update that into an 80s kind of look. The mansion has a two-tone variation to it because the mansion represents both the sort of security and the warmth for mutants that Charles Xavier so much dreams of. So there's a kind of a warm, reddish, goldish feel to that. And then when you go below into the cerebro and the sort of science fiction workings of the mansion, it's kind of a blue and white and cool but neutral variation. And that's something that's been established for a long time. We wanted to build a larger version of the X Mansion, which caused us in Montreal to have to punch a hole through a soundstage and take two sound stages and glue them together so that we could have a library and multiple levels and all kinds of other things and the camera could move through these locations. You'd have hallways that you didn't even realize you were going into the next stage and then you'd have a whole other areas of the house. One of the delightful things about this job as a production designer in films is that you get given these kind of far out ideas to manifest. And of course the Fight Club is probably a prime example of that. Here we are in Germany in 1983, behind the Iron Curtain in Berlin, and I thought maybe if we could find an old, grungy old theatre, and voila. We're in the Corona Theatre in Montreal. We're doubling for East Berlin in the 80s. We've got 250 extras. I thought, what a great thing to be able to have tiers of seats for all these crazy characters kind of KGB guys or Stasi guys who are out of uniform, in uniform, corrupt gangsters, whatever would exist behind the Iron Curtain that people would know about after hours. So putting this big kind of punk looking iron grungy fight cage in there was great because you get the contrast between the faded glory of theatre and this contemporary kind of heavy metal look of the cage. The Corona Theatre is hundreds of years old and it wouldn't support the weight of the cage and so we had to take out the floor and then had to put footing underneath the floor. Because it's an old theater, it's not built like today's where you have rigging points and everything everywhere. It had almost no rigging points, so everything had to be supported by the cage. It became the structure for the grips, for the electrics, the lighting to be attached on it into the stunts so that it could rig from it and for the flying sequences inside. And all the cage pieces has to be wild so that the camera could see through. The only thing that has with a angle aufnehmen can is I mean, 83 East Berlin, they didn't have what West Berlin had. Everything was just a little held back, a bit older. There are plenty of guys that look like they haven't had much sun, you know, all that kind of like, you know, factory workers. And we dressed people, a mix of everyone from the doctors at that place to the Stasi generals, to the Stasi police, to the ladies of the night, to the grandmas in the back. Louise had just the best costumes. It was a terrific sort of juxtaposition. And then with it full of fighting mutants was even better, you know. The whole thing came to life really well. When we started thinking about what this movie was gonna be, part of the fun of it was thinking, what is the worst place you would want someone to wake up, and that would be the 80s, because it was in some ways the grossest, most material, most polluted. The Cairo streets required a lot of research to understand what Cairo was like in 1983. It's a very textural sort of place, and it's a very, very crowded place, but narratively, we wanted to experience it the way that Apocalypse experiences it. Grant Major's attention to detail was exquisite. One of our Egyptian actors who grew up in Egypt in 83 actually was picking up props on the set saying, oh my God, I haven't seen labels like these since 1983 Cairo. 
and they don't exist anymore. His first impressions are really important, so I wanted to make it kind of gritty and dusty and hot and commercialised and kind of compromised from his previously verdant land. All these things need to be staged in a way that can be filmed. And then with Tom, I need to figure out where he's going to put his cameras, how he wants to light it and things like that. So it's a big journey. This was meant to be the centre of the universe before I was betrayed. Now, it will be. The script takes us to a different Cairo that's been ruptured by the birth of a new pyramid that's come out of the ground in Cairo City. The sort of violence of that eruption has broken down and, and smashed down this world that we've established. Our first job was to find a suitable location where we could commute to and build this environment. I found an old factory space that had been condemned and was about to be demolished. From there we built a series of broken structures that were in the middle of this large courtyard area and built up layer upon on layer upon layer this destroyed environment. It's really a mix between real concrete and styrofoam. <laughs> real cars crushed, real bits of concrete with sort of, you know, wrought iron running through them, mixed with styrofoam stuff. It looks really scary when you first walk on set. 50 foot green screens and half chopped up cars. I mean, it really does look like a bomb went off in Cairo. 